So another year has begun again. And I'm excited about 2017. I get the gist from the media that everyone's excited about 2017 because 2016 was kind of a flop. In general, I liked the year, but there were a lot of strange things that happened. Anyway, I thought it would be fun today to round up my favorites in beauty from the year. I am certain I have forgotten about something I raved about in like March, but I did my best to scroll through the archives, I scrolled through my Instagram to try and pick all of the things I really loved for the year. Things that like I'm excited to carry into 2017. There were of course things that I've tried in 2016 that were great, but weren't like game changer, lifetime type products like these are. Enough intro, let's start getting into the products. So I just have this box on my lap of everything. I'm just gonna pull it out and give you a quick recap. If you wanna learn about any of these products more in depth, just search the beauty galleries on my new site. Have you seen it? Oh, I've got a totally new makeover and I'm so excited about it. But I've talked in depth about all of these products that I'll mention today on the blog. So just search either the name of the product in the search box or you can just scroll through the beauty galleries and wait until you come across it. So I'm just gonna do a quick as, as brief as I can be recap of why I love the product so much. So the first thing I'm grabbing is the Hoola Bronzer by Benefit. I'm typically not a bronzer gal, but I picked this up this year and I love it. It's not shimmery at all. Uh, it's like the perfect slight bronze for me. So that was a great, great choice for the year. Um, I can't do a roundup of favorites without mentioning the Burt's Bees lipsticks. I have a post with three of my favorite shades. This one is Iced Iris. I wear this one a lot. It's like a nice, fun pink color. These were great lipsticks. There's a whole range of, gosh, I want to say like 9 to 13 shades, and a lot of them are really great, so they're worth looking into. Okay, a mascara win for the year is the Bobbi Brown Eye Opening Mascara. This is the thickest, chunkiest mascara I've ever used. But, if you use the hack of putting a couple drops of saline, like contact solution, in it, that will help it thin out a bit and it won't be quite as chunky on your lashes. Or you can just rake through it over and over like I do, but man, great mascara if you want a ton of impact with your lashes. Great mascara. Another lipstick, which I'm sure you're tired of hearing about, but I told you you'd be tired of hearing about it, is NARS Velvet Lip Glide in Bound. Perfect pink, I would say year round, especially for the winter time. Can't stop wearing this, it's great. If you want a brighter pink, my winner for the year for a brighter pink is uh, Urban Decay's Vice Lipstick in Brat. It's uh, actually not terribly far off from Vice, or Vice, from um, Iced Iris from Burt's Bees that I just showed you. This one is just a little deeper, that Iced Iris one is a little bit more on the lilac end of the spe spectrum, although still pink, um, it has a little bit more of that tone to it. This is more like a true Barbie pink without being hot, hot pink. So I love that lipstick. Um, let me wrap up with Bobbi Brown's. The Longwear Cream Shadow Stick, I have it in Bark and Rich Caviar. I have been using these as eyeliner for months now and they're great. I finally got some really, really tiny eyeliner brushes and I'll just press the brush against these sticks because it's supposed to be an eyeshadow. It's a longwear cream shadow stick, but I would never wear this color as an eyeshadow. It's way too dark and it's really rich and creamy. I actually think it'd be kind of a hassle to do uh, all over your eyelid, but as liner, it's great. So these are winners. Definitely longwear. Um, the rich caviar shade is a little bit harder to get off than bark, but bark is nice for that liner that isn't so dark that it kind of takes away from the length of your lashes, if that makes sense. You can still kind of see through it a little bit, depending on how much you apply, of course. But that's a nice chocolate brown one. Okay, this L'Oreal Infallible Pro Contour Palette was such a fun find this year. It has the highlight and the contour shade. Um, the contour is like that perfect gray-based brown that doesn't look like you're just putting bronzer where you should be contouring. Um, and the highlighter is nice too. The highlighter isn't like Oh my, she's glowing, which I don't love to glow. Every once in a while, I'm like, highlighter. But for the most part, I like to look matte and kind of flat, I guess, with contour and blush. Maybe if I didn't care about blush, I'd be more of a highlight contour girl, but I like blush a lot, so I do contour and blush. 
and oftentimes skip highlight altogether. Anyway, this is a good palette. Uh, man, if my memory serves me, I did a whole um, tutorial with it. <sighs> search, search the archives. Okay, got to pull some stuff out. This is not available any longer, but I got this at the Nordstrom Anniversary Sale online, and oh my gosh, it's a win. If they ever release it, I will let you know. Re-release it. It is the Charlotte Tilbury Instant Look in a Palette 5 Minute Face on the Go Seductive Beauty. But all of the shades are so wearable, which is hard to find in a palette. You've got two blushes, a highlighter, a bronzer, and then I like using this all over my lid, this uh, lighter shade on my brow bone, and then on the inner corner, and then this on the outer corner. A lot of times, even if I'm using another like all over the lid shade, I'll still grab this dark one for the crease color. It's beautiful. Uh, so impressed. Charlotte Tilbury ain't cheap at all, but this is a great palette. If I was to invest in one palette to, and plan on using it until I hit the bottom of the pan in each shade and just like it was empty, this I could actually work through for the rest of my life. I don't know how long it would take me. That actually would be a good challenge. Um, anyway, oh, such a great find. So fun. It's so expensive, so I can't say like it's worth the money because it's so expensive. But it was my first Charlotte Tilbury experience and you know, I had to try it for you guys. Right? I did it for you. Um, another palette that's a little bit more cost effective is the Bare Minerals Be Beautiful palette. I picked this up at the end of the year and it has also been such a win. I'm traveling pretty soon with my husband and I think this is all I'm going to bring. Um, it's got a couple blushes, a bronzer, a highlighter, and then some shades here that you could use as eyeshadow or highlighters. And then, oh, am I blinding you? Um, eyeshadow colors. The purples aren't scary purple. Um, I'm such a classic makeup brown and gray eyeshadow kind of gal, but those are to me totally wearable. So this was a wonderful palette. This is still available if you want to look into it. Okay, I think I'm getting to the bottom here. Wait, wait for it. Okay. Oh, almost dropped my box. A blush win is NARS Impassioned. I can do this with one hand. I cannot. Nard. Well, maybe if I open the right side. I was looking for like a almost not even there super light pink neutral and this is it. But it shows up nicely. So many of my blushes from Tarte are like bold colors, which I love wearing. But in the winter time, I wanted to soften everything up a bit, and this is such a nice soft pink. I think I could wear this easily into the spring and summer as well. It's really neutral. Um, man, it, it's like they mixed a nice dusty pink with a bit of a contour shade. Like it's that, it has that much depth to it. That's a really nice blush. Another NARS product is an eyeshadow called Ondine. I hope I'm saying that right. Ondine. Um, so great. It reminds me of, is it Tapestry Taupe? That was a CoverGirl eyeshadow. They may still have it that I used forever in high school. Is that it? Tapestry Taupe? Um, it's a little bit darker. It can actually look a touch, um, like purple is not the right word, but in that family on the eye, but not in a like crazy wild way. It's still really brown, but that is a great all over the lid and then also really wonderful crease color. You can also do like a light swipe of it all over the lid and then really press it in in the crease and you have this like dimensional eye with one single product. Okay, the last thing I have in my pile here and then we're gonna talk about hair um, is the Origins 3-Part Harmony Oil Infused Serum for Renewal, Repair, and Radiance. This sits on my bathroom counter and I use it at night after I either take my makeup off um, I still am using a Pond's face wipe. I know I probably shouldn't be doing that because people say face wipes aren't good, but it works really well for me. Um, or if I take a shower at night and wash my face, this is what goes on. I love this. I, I kind of skip out on this in the really humid days, but otherwise my skin is very dry. And this like sinks in really nicely. This is just such a nice moisturizer if you have dry skin. I was super picky about what made it in the hair category into best of 2016 because I'm super picky about hair stuff. Uh, with no surprise, the Living Proof Full Dry Volume Blast is a huge win. This is a texturizing spray that makes your hair enormous. Enormous. Love this. 
The deep conditioner I can't live without is the Pureology Instant Deep Conditioning Mask. It's a rinse out treatment. You put it on in the shower. I think, what did I just say? I said on camera, oh, one to three minutes um, is what you want to leave it in as. I think uh, like on my last month video, I was like, leave it on for 10 minutes. And then the packaging says one to three. So yeah, I was a little, uh, a little overzealous on that timing of the first time. Um, but this I've been using for a long time. I can't remember when I started using this, but I'm certain it was this year. Great mask. My hair is very dry, quite damaged, although I'm healing it with much success. Blog post coming soon there. Uh, this is a great mask if you have really dry damaged hair. The last product I have to mention, 2016 Best Beauty for Hair, is the Kerastase, oh, is it French? Anyway, it's the Resurfacing Strengthening Milk for anti-breakage and anti-brittleness. You can't feel this in your hair in a like waxy heavy way, but you can definitely tell you've put something on your ends to really protect them and make them feel great. Highly, highly recommend. It's not cheap. A little goes a long way. You can you put it in wet um, and just put a drop in your hand, rub it around and run it through your ends. You can put it a little higher than just your ends, depending on how kind of damaged and brittle your hair is. But man, it's good. And I hate the waxy feeling that some like leave-in products can leave in your hair. This will not leave any. So I only have three, but these were the three winners from last year. So there's one hair tool that I really got attached to this year, and it's a T3 blow dryer. It just is fast and powerful. It's great. It has replaced my slowly dying Rusk Speed Freak that I used for a really, really long time. I still recommend it. It's a great price point for a great dryer. This one's a little bit quieter. It's a little bit lighter than the Speed Freak. Um, but what I like about it is it has the three heat settings, cool, medium, and then really hot. The really hot is really hot. So try and avoid that as much as possible, like constantly. Don't ever dry your hair with super hot heat. So it lives in the middle for me and it's a, still a really strong stream of air that's warm but I can tell that it's not burning my hair dry. There's a difference between blowing your hair dry and burning it dry, and this will blow your hair dry. Um, and it has two speeds, low and high. It's just a great blow dryer. I've seen, I've used some um, products here to help cut blow dry time as my hair's getting longer, and I feel like those products in conjunction with this dryer has been a nice win for my super long, for me, hair. Okay, so that's what I have for the year. I'm sorry if I forgot something that I've raved about. Let me know if you're like, Kate, how did you not talk about blank? Would you leave a comment? Because I may need to like go in and edit this video as I recall things I raved about over the year. Um, but th those were for sure winners after I scrolled through my content to see like, yes, 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 yes. Definitely excited to reuse these in this next year.